things to draw one's focus. There was a flare and CME to be seen, and apparently a couple of them on the far side, too. Looks like a transequatorial reach for the southern coronal hole at the dark line as well. Let's go next to GOES, and the X-ray flux shows the modest C-class solar flare that came from the active region incoming on the south. The eruption pumped a gorgeous wave through the corona, but its ejection was directed fairly away from Earth. Activity is definitely on the rise as we watch the eruptive plasma action on the departing limb. Sun gearing up in all ways expected as peak activity by a year from now should be 50 to 100 times greater than what we're seeing today. Couple rumbles of note yesterday, large blood echo in Chile at the low velocity zone, and one well above average in the Norwegian Sea. It is worth noting that we have planetary and solar forcing relevant to seismicity as the week progresses, could see magnitudes ramping up higher here soon. Heading over to the Global Climate Report for November, something to note, Siberia is unconscionably red pretty much every month. There are like three stations there used to estimate the entire region, and this is where the North Magnetic Pole is heading and where solar particle forcing is strongest. Otherwise, there was near record cold in Kazakhstan and of course the La Nina Blue in the Pacific, otherwise a slightly above average month. Let's jump back to the sun for the Swedish Solar Telescope's best sunspot investigation yet. These images at the link below show some of the prettiest and highest detail shots any of us have seen of them, rivaling Iris and Hinode in a big way. Interesting story that I'm hoping for opinions on in the comment section. Do you think Earth is lucky? This guy looked at the other planets, the dangers of space, the loss of habitability on Mars and asks, why has Earth been so friendly for billions of years? His answer is luck, one which I find maybe lazy but definitively academically unsatisfying. So let's brainstorm him up some ideas here, shall we? Meanwhile, we're moving on to a modeling at the next level. Interstellar medium, cosmic rays, plasma interaction. Not easy things to model but utterly necessary if the scientists are ever to realize the derailment of that science that occurred decades ago, which led to dark matter nonsense and led to Alfane writing the great book called Cosmic Plasma. Speaking of which, heading back to the beginning, at least in the mainstream Big Bang paradigm, we come to what they call Cosmic Dawn. At this time, the stars and galaxies are forming and the intergalactic medium is cooling and fragmenting. Turns out, before they go much further, they better go back and fix the same problem climatologists realized they had this year. The uncertainties aren't small, and you wind up with outrageous predictions if you allow those errors to propagate from a simple equation up to the scale of the universe. Last news comes from the moon, and the arctic, and methane. There's a bit of a roadblock in the mainstream arctic methane release fear story which is troubling for them because CO2 took a pounding this year and they need to shore up the greenhouse gas thing. But the short version of this is, the higher the sea level rises, the less methane will be released. All that sea level rise they fear would actually be taking an axe to the methane release budget from the polar zones.